In this video, we are going to unbox the 9999SA2 start stop push button kit that installs on the NEMA 1 enclosures for the Type S motor starters and their clamshell design. When we open up the box, you'll get a couple pieces. You'll have the instruction bulletin and some warning, a warning label sticker as well for the front of the enclosure. You get a wiring harness that has a red, yellow, and black wire. Um, they go with color coding that's in the instruction bulletin. You get a danger label also for the enclosure itself. Two wiring clips to use on hinged enclosures if you were to use it there. Um, for our old combo starters, they use the hinged enclosures. For this kit, you won't need them. Um, you'll also get this. The main part of your kit is your start-stop push button. These are momentary push buttons. Normally open contact for your start circuit and a normally close for your stop. For these devices, you'll install them directly onto your starter. These pin tabs here will actually mount directly into these little cavities built into the contact itself. So it's right in there. And then what you'll do, I already have the knockout done on the enclosure itself. That will sit after you're done wiring the device and put your clamshell enclosure back together and it comes right through the front of the device itself. For wiring for the 9999SA2 start stop push buttons for the enclosed Type S starters um, and the NEMA 1 boxes, the little clamshell design and this rectangular start stop. You'll use standard three wire control here. Um, it's available in both separate source installations as well as common control. We're gonna go over wiring for both. From the factory, you're actually gonna get a wire from 95 to this right-hand side of your coil, as well as terminal three down to the left-hand side of your coil. This contact up here is actually gonna be used as your holding circuit in the three wire control that we'll go over. Um, one hand side of your source voltage, in this one we're looking at separate source, so we'll call it a neutral for say 24 volt or 120. Uh, for common control you'll see the wiring for that as well, it's a little different. Um, for separate source, your neutral will be wired directly to your overload relay, which is, has a normally closed contact, which indicates a trip when it's open, breaking that circuit to the right hand side of your coil. The other side of your source voltage, so your hot leg for 120, um, will come up actually to your start stop station to 1A. 2A on your start stop push button assembly will actually go to terminal 2 on that auxiliary contact up there for your holding circuit. And 3A will go to the terminal 3. So the way the start stop button works and kind of methodology here is start to normally open circuit stop is normally closed so what happens when you hit the start button is your 1a to 3a closes sending power here to terminal 3 on your holding circuit engaging the coil and then when this coil is engaged this holding circuit contact actually closes and the continuous current coming from 2a is engaged to this coil and holds that circuit in uh, until you hit stop which actually breaks the circuit from 1a to 2a that way dropping out the coil you'll have to re-energize again manually by hitting that start button so that's separate source for common control wiring is just a little bit different. You'll actually get a type S starter if it does not have that form S on it where it's set up for common control. There will be a red wire from terminal L2. This control takeoff screw behind terminal L2 um, will come down to the right hand side of your overload relay already there for common control. Jumper to 95 go into the right hand side of your coil. The left hand side of your coil will again be connected to terminal 3 of your holding circuit contact. And the only other change for this is going to be uh, a control takeoff wire that you'll install from terminal 1 on your control takeoff over to 1A. Everything else has the same connection points.